Hello everyone and welcome to episode 46 of the chess.com rapid rating climb series. In this series I play 15 minute plus 10 games. I'm just going to play a quick move so that I don't abort the game. And I talk you through my thought process while we play. And then in the post game analysis I can go a bit more in depth on some of the ideas we covered in the game. As well as actually use the computer to see where I went right, where I, my, I was thinking wrong. And so I can improve my game and I can teach you guys how to improve your game so you can implement them in your own. With the intro out of the way, let's get into it. We have e4, c6, d4, the Karo Khan defense after d5. We've been getting a lot of Karos recently and I have a playlist dedicated to my videos in the Karo Khan. And my opponent goes for the exchange variation. It's quite popular, especially as you get to higher elos. And it's interesting because white's missing an e pawn and we're missing a c pawn. And you might think, oh, well, that benefits white because, sorry, that benefits black because I have two central pawns and white has one. Theoretically, yes, but white gets a massive grip over the e5 square. I control the e4 square very nicely. But white has an open e-file to contest e4 a little bit better. Whereas we can't contest e5 quite as well because we don't have an open e-file, if you can see what I mean. Okay, so my opponent goes for the knight f3 line, which we have had quite a few times actually. And I'm going to see um, whether we can get a certain bit of prep, uh, which we did check in a previous episode of the rating climb. Yeah, it goes h3, bishop h5, and I think we're expecting castle, knight c6, bishop here or pawn here, I think is the idea, mm -hmm. and then we push our pawn, and we're expecting bishop f4, I believe, yeah, okay, so... Let me see if I can remember what I'm supposed to do here. Mm. So bishop d6. Take, take. I'm sure is the line. I'm sure that's the correct line. There are some other ways it can go, but this is one of the main lines in this opening. I'm not going massively in detail on the ideas of the opening, uh, just because I've made so many videos in it. So you can check those out, like I said, in the playlist below. And we did get um, exactly this position, I believe, in a video titled something like um, The Exchange Karo Khan Isn't Boring. Something like that. Ah, no, this is a mistake. This is a mistake. Now b2 is under attack. Sorry, b7 is under attack. But um, our opponent hasn't put a knight on d2 yet. So we should just be able to take this. Yes, he can take on b7. But then we just have rook b8 attacking the queen. And um, then we're going to escape with our bishop. So if we take, he's got to take back. And his pawn structure is ruined. This should be very, very bad for him. Very bad. See, people might here be tempted to castle. So that after uh, queen b7, the rook isn't under attack because it would be defended. But, like I said, if you calculate properly, like I just did, there's no threat. And look at this. Like, this is terrible for him. I think castling makes the most sense. Again, if he takes on b7, rook b8, we go and win b2. That's not a problem. Queen f4 is a move that I want to play. To start targeting some pawns. Also rotating this knight through h5 to f4. Target some weak squares. He does take. Okay. Rook b8. Rook b8, queen a6. Rook b2, he might be intending queen a3 to try and secure a queen trade. Hmm. 
Hmm. We could actually ignore him. And play something like this. Um, rook b8, queen a6. We don't have to take on b2. We could go rook b6. Just to defend the knight. So our queen can move. And then queen a4 can be played. Or queen a3 I think is more natural. Again offering us a queen trade. But then we can go queen f4. Um... Let's say something like knight d2 to defend f3. Queen h4 attacks h3. And then we're preparing to bring this knight in. And we also have ideas of e5. And if we exchange, then our rook will be already prepared to swing over on the 6th rank once we can get all these pizzas out the way. So that looks pretty good to me. Let's go for it. Like I said... Queen a6, I don't want to take on b2 because of queen to a3. So rook b2, queen a3 attacks the rook and the queen. And I don't want to trade queens because we're going to have a massive attack. Queen b8 is playable to defend the rook and avoid a queen trade. And he can't actually develop the knight because we control that square. But then our queen is kind of just tied down to the defense of the rook. You know? Is that a problem? I mean, e5 is still on the cards, right? Rook b2, queen a3, queen b8. I assume rook d1 to prepare knight d2. That looks like the only plan that white has, because otherwise he can't develop either of his queenside pieces. So that looks forcing. Then e5. Take, take. Bishop e2, getting the bishop out of danger and defending f3. What can we do there? Oh, wait, no, the bishop can't go to e2, because our rook controls e2. So we can't exchange. He can't exchange. So after e5, I think this is a very critical line, which is why I'm calculating it. And I hope you guys can see the way that I'm calculating. I'm basically going through the lines, and then trying to find the most forcing moves... I'm checking lines that don't work, so then I'm only narrowing it down to one if possible, like one possible line, so I can continue calculating, because I'm trying to figure out if I should play rook b6 or rook b2, and I want to make rook b2 work, so that's what I'm doing. If I can't make rook b2 work, I'll play rook b6, but rook b2 is quite forcing, I think. So e5, if he can't take, what does he do? If he goes for something like knight d2, we could just take here. And then if takes, knight takes. We're threatening rook d2, knight f3. I feel like this works. Rook b2, queen a3, queen b8. Am I missing anything? I don't think so. Rook d1, preparing knight d2. e5, he can't take me. So knight d2. Take. I don't think he can take that back. He could try a move like c4. But then we have knight e5 anyway. And we have this fork. And if the bishop drops back, the knight does cover our rook's attack off the bishop. But I feel like that should be winning. I feel like that should be winning. Okay, he doesn't have to play queen a3. He goes for this. Uh, 
Um, wait, have I just blundered? Oh, please don't tell me I've just blundered. How did I miss that? He doesn't have to play queen a3 at all. He can just do this. And rook b6 isn't a move, and rook c8 isn't a move because the queen controls that square. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Okay, well, I think we always have queen f4, right? And then if he um, takes, then we can take here. It's still very difficult for him to develop. Because knight d2 still isn't a move. Knight a3, the knight's just out of the game anyway. We could consider sacking like this. But... I don't really want to. Because if he are here... Rook b8... He, just have mo he has moves like queen c5. And this knight is just still a problem. So... You should consider moves like this, just to see if there's anything there, but there isn't. So queen f4 looks logical to me. And yeah, I'm going to be down a piece. But the thing is, if I like win these pawns and play like knight g4, it's game over. Because he's going to be up a piece, but his knight and rook are completely undeveloped. And our pawns keep his bishop kind of away from the defense e2 is controlled by our rook as well and if our if his queen takes on c6 then the queen won't be supporting a move like bishop e2 he has to take this though because if he doesn't i'm going to reroute like this probably and then it should just be a very easy cleanup so okay it's frustrating to blunder that um there is an idea of like this but it doesn't work anyway. It's a queen a4. If he takes with the queen. I think we just take on f3. And if he tries to move like king h2 to defend the pawn. Then we have rook f2. We also have knight h5. If we take on f3 we're also covering the queen's retreating squares. Well d2. It's already covered, I suppose. I wish I could say this was an intentional sacrifice. It most definitely isn't. But I think it works. Because I don't see how White defends himself. This is game over. There's no threats on our king. We're completely covered. Queen a4, what does that do? I have no idea. I have no idea what that does. Can we not just take? What, what does queen a4 do? Okay, he accesses these lines. Alright, so maybe he wants queen d1. Okay, but if queen h3, queen d1, knight g4, he can't do anything apart from sack his queen. Maybe that's his idea. Uh, if we go queen h3, queen a3, which I don't know why he wouldn't have just done on the previous turn, then we can ignore the threat and just go knight g4 anyway. Because h2 is mate. Okay, let's take. This looks like game over. Queen d1. Yeah. Just knight. Knight g4.
He's got to sack his queen. Game over. Well, that that was interesting. Um, I fully blundered my knight, and I'm sure there was a better way for White to defend that position. There's no way he defended that correctly, but we'll take it. Let's get into the analysis. All right, so we had 86.5% accuracy. My opponent had 72.8%. And I'm just checking, you know, the graph of the game review, right? It never went in White's favor, ever. So that whole knight on c6 thing getting captured, that might have just been a completely accidental stroke of genius, <laughs> which is hilarious. <laughs> Let's have a look at the game. So e4, c6, d4, d5. White, of course, does not have to take, and taking isn't really the best way for white to try and prove an advantage. Quote-unquote better are moves like e5, and you go into some advanced Karo Khan lines like this. I don't see advanced as in skill level. I say advanced as in white advances the pawn, so it's called the advanced variation. You don't have to play c5, by the way. You can play moves like bishop f5, and you get more of a classic Karo Khan structure here. But I prefer c5, um, and you just immediately go after the center. I've got loads of videos in this line if you want to check that out in further detail. Um, here white can also play knight c3 or knight d2, both with the intention of, a t of defending e4. And black can do a couple things here. Black can play e6 and just support his center in a more French, uh, like a structure more similar to the French defense. He can take h6 is apparently a move, but it's basically takes or e6. Personally, I take and I go for the Karpov line after knight d2 and knight f6. Knight f6 immediately is also a move. I used to play that and bishop f5 is a move, uh, although I personally don't like those lines. Uh, knight d2 is also a way to play and again you can take and transpose to knight c3 takes and knight takes um, I think knight f6 is kind of a move here going for more of a French structure but I don't think it is the best and plans are like e6, c5 you get your typical French setup um, but that's not the best way to play against it like I said it's probably better just to take White can also play the fantasy with f3. And you'll see the eval bar gives an advantage to black. Far from the truth, really, because these lines are incredibly complicated. Uh, this is all theory. And I hate playing this as the black pieces, um, personally. So instead, uh, there is also. An idea to play knight c3 here and gambit this pawn. That's another way to play. And instead of um, taking, personally, I play e6 in this position. And I try to argue that f3 is just a stupid move because I'm not going to take you. And a lot of people end up advancing with e5 eventually, not immediately, but eventually anyway. And I feel like I have very good results in these structures. So, instead, my opponent takes, and that's the last option. I feel like it's kind of the worst option, but it also means that Karo Khan players can't use as much prep as they might like to, right? So we have the exchange. I suppose you can take with the queen, but this just looks like a bad Scandinavian to me. I don't see how this is good for black at all. So anyway, I take with a pawn, bishop d3, knight f6, knight f3, bishop g4. This is all very standard development. h3, bishop goes back. You can take here. Um, 
I had a commenter in a previous video where I went in this line asking why you can't take, and he was trying to argue that after e6, white, sorry, black has very good control of the light squares, so surely it'd be a good thing to trade the bishop off. And he makes a valid point for sure. Uh, my only can my only quarrel. I think I gave like three points as to why I said I don't take. Firstly, is after bishop h4, I can take any time. Right, I, I I always reserve the right to take, but in a more um, in a position where I get a more beneficial outcome, right? Which is what happened in this game. I waited to take, and once he moved his queen to b3 and off of the defense of the knight, then I took so that I would double his pawns, right? Whereas if I took here, I wouldn't do that. Secondly, g4 is of absolutely zero concern. All this does is weaken the white position. Uh, he has no attack whatsoever. Um, he's kind of just leaving himself open to counter attacks. Moves like h5. I can lock down the king side with that quite easily and go and play on the queen side. And typically white is stronger on the king side in these exchange variations and black focuses on the queen side. So if you go for this, it can be quite easy to get into a variation where... Let's just say for the sake of argument, like bishop f4, take, take, h5, g5, knight e4. I'm just, obviously the computer's saying this is bad, but I'm just using it as an argument. Something like this, for example, is very easy for black to play because white has no breakthrough on the king side anymore. And the attention can turn to the queen side, where black is typically a bit better. So, oh, and the last thing. Uh, also, I want to challenge this bishop on this long diagonal, probably. So if I take the knight, the bishop is basically unassailable. I can't do anything to stop it from staring down at h7 when I castle kingside, which could, which could cause problems. But if I keep the bishop on the board, I reserve the right to play bishop to g6. Whether I'm forced to if he plays g4, or if I just choose to, to try and trade the bishops off and potentially get rid of any attack on the king side, that may happen. So that's why I don't take. But taking is, of course, a fine move. My opponent castles, which is a good move. My game is lagging somehow hello okay knight c6 just developing attacking this pawn c3 just securing this pawn e6 bishop f4 bishop d6 takes takes and queen b3 is just completely losing basically because i can take the knight this is not the main line the main line is I believe rook e1, castle knight bd2, and after I think rook a c8, queen b3. We have had games in this series where in like this position we've had knight bd2, castle, queen c2, and rook a c8 threatening moves like knight b4 because the pawn is pinned to the queen where we'll be forking the bishop and the queen and if this knight moves then knight takes d4 is possible because again the pawn can't take because my rook attacks the queen so we've had moves like a3 here to stop that and we've gotten in on the light squares in scenarios e5 has also happened in some cases these are all typical Karo khan ideas especially in the exchange variation where we get an open c file and e5 is our main pawn break if we are going to play a pawn break basically my point is knight bd2 is a must because this knight needs support but you also want to break the pin with a move like queen b3. But before you play queen b3, you need to play knight b to d2 so that this knight has a defender and you don't have to take back with the pawn. Our opponent doesn't do that. And we take. Like I said, this is of absolutely zero concern. Rook b8, the queen's under attack, queen a6. 
And we can just get our bishop out, I assume. Bishop b5. Can we not just play rook b6? Queen c8. King e7. This... Ah, because we just get this piece, and it's two pieces for a rook. Our king is surprisingly safe, and um, this looks pretty dire for white. There's easier ways to go about this, um, but basically, it's winning. He, his king size structure is ruined, and he just has no defenders, which is what we found out in the game, right? He just ran out of defenders. He had nobody. We castle. He took on b7, rook a b8, queen a6, and okay, so in this position I decided on rook takes b2, which was an inaccuracy, not because of bishop b5, but because of queen a3. Now I had calculated in this line, queen b8, I thought rook d1 was the only move, which I'm absolutely correct about, rook d1 is the only move, because otherwise white can't move anything. Because he needs to defend the d2 square. So rook d1. My plan was e5. Which is the best move again. Knight d2. I wanted to take. I thought that he couldn't take back. Because then I take. And we have way too much pressure. Something like king g2. We have knight h5. Looking at f4. And. Oh what was the other. Idea. The other idea is that we have moves like this to go up a ton of material. What are we up like? A knight and two pawns? So, yeah, I thought he could not take here. And I didn't know what he was going to do in this position. I didn't see a valid way for him to continue. If he tries a move like rook ab8, I assume we just exchange, go queen f4, and, you know... Queen E, sorry, Knight E5 is going to probably be coming in. Maybe it's better to go Queen E5 so that this Knight can rotate to F4. Which I only knew the whole Knight H5, Knight F4 plan because we've looked at that in a previous video. Um, on attacking the King side in the Cairo Khan exchange variation. Where your opponent moves the Queen and allows the doubling of the pawns on the F-file after you take the Knight. So all these ideas overlap, and it helped me to win this game. So rook takes b2. That was the whole queen a3 line, right? He chose bishop b5, and it's completely losing. It's completely losing because of queen f4. And it's funny, even a move like queen d8 is completely winning. Because if you take this... Knight h5, the queen's going to come into like g5, knight f4, the queen might come to h4. It's so over. It's ridiculous. White just can't defend. And the way that these pawns are structured as well stops white from being able to get his queen and bishop back on the light squares to help defend. He just can't move. It's unbelievable. It really is. So... Rook takes b2, bishop b5, queen f4, takes, it's game over. Okay, this is a mistake. So apparently queen g5 check is better. Why? If king h2, knight h5. Okay, let's just for the sake of argument say queen d3. Whoa, we have this because the pawn is pinned and then what knight f4 and we're going to mate on g2 wow and if knight if queen g5 king h1 knight h5 queen d3 knight f4 let's say this and then we just mate on g2 so if a move like rook g1, queen h4, we threaten h3, which will be mate. Yeah, it's completely game over. If a move like rook g3, rook f2, the rook's now undefended. White's playing without three pieces. Just, just playing without them. And his king is so exposed. 
So Queen G5 check was the correct line. We took on F3. And my plan was just to take here and go Knight G4. And the best move for my opponent is Queen A3. Which is what I was expecting. This is what I thought he was going to play. Um, C4 also makes sense. Which I kind of expected. I can't take because of this. Here I was just planning to take on H3. And if you try to grab a pawn, then knight g4, and it's game over again. So the correct idea is queen a3 with a fork. Queen g4, queen g3. I can take on d4. And I guess white does defend himself. But it's equal material because I've won three pawns for the price of my knight. And I still have a massive attack. Like, you're still struggling to develop this knight. If I move like knight c3, queen c4, I'm now up material because I have so many pawns. This might be coming in, the bishop's under attack, bishop b5. I can do this, and I'm down the exchange, up four pawns. This also assumes white finds the best defensive line. And that's why queen g5 was better, I guess, because white doesn't have the time to bring some pieces back to the defense. But I mean, this is completely winning, I'm sure. Knight e4, and white's going to have a nightmare. Like, his king is so exposed. I'm going to march these pawns down the board. So, queen a4 is a blunder. I feel like he might have mouse slipped instead of going queen a3. But we will look at queen a3, because this is the best defensive move. Rook b6 is the only move to keep the advantage. I feel like I would have found that. Now, a move like rook e2 would be good, except for uh, bishop b5 attacking the rook. But even here, like, this is hard to defend. I think part of the problem is c4 uh, and the queen see each other. In this position, apparently... Hmm? Oh, this is better, okay. But apparently this is fine for black. And he's still winning. But I think that's the whole idea of queen a3. So queen a3, rook b6 is the best move. Which makes sense because you attack the bishop, right? If you try and save the bishop, which is what any logical person probably does, then queen h3, you're threatening knight g4. So c4 is the only move to offer a queen trade. You could even just do this. And uh, win a piece and be up like what two pawns or something. So there is that, but I think you could also just like play queen h4 and continue the attack anyway. But the simplest is just to trade and go rook a6. So yeah, queen a4 is just a blunder because we take on h3, and this is just game over. So. That's the way the game ended. Um, not bad. Not bad. Uh, like I say, I completely blundered the move bishop to b5. Uh, but, like, an accidental brilliancy, essentially. Like, an accidental brilliant move. Uh, just losing the knight. But having these pieces put an insane amount of pressure on the king with basically zero defense. Like, he just doesn't have any defenders. And, um, yeah, we just mop up, play knight g4, deliver a mate. He resigns, obviously, first. But, yeah, that's the game. Bit of a shorter video than usual. But, hey, I can't just magically make the games last longer. My opponent didn't spend much time thinking. Probably should have. Probably should have. I don't understand why people play rapid and then don't use their time. Just play blitz if you're going to do that. Or play bullet. Just use your time, you know? Anyway. If you have made it to the end of the video, thank you very much for watching. If you're not already subscribed, I'd really appreciate if you could hit the big red button. I don't know if it's red anymore, actually. It might not be red. But anyway, I'd appreciate if you subscribe, if you enjoyed it and found this educational. And for those of you already subscribed, thank you very much. I really appreciate your support, and I'll see you in the next video.